Now, so Time for school. We'd Come better go in. in. Yep. Thank, thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Yeah. Come on then, Olivia. Take me to wherever we're going. Let's enjoy the day in school, yeah. shall we? Do you enjoy every day? Yeah. Ah, that's amazing. What about you, Liam? Do you enjoy every day? Yeah, it's always fun. It's always fun. Seven times table. It's going to be tough. Here we go. Remember, guys, first answer is what we're listening for. It's not how quickly I type it in, it's how quickly Mick answers all the class answers. On your marks. Get set. Go. 70. 49. 43. 7. 35. 35. 42. 28. 70. 35. Now, let's have a look. Who, who won? What do you think? Probably, I think, I think one. Probably you. Yeah. Probably? Yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> so, Nick, uh, that's fascinating. Uh, is that a regular sort of start to the day? or is That's, that's a regular math start to the day. We have literacy starts and also follow yeah. a similar theme of doing activities to, to encourage children to get the facts. So, so the children uh, engage in what you, what you call that? Speed maths? We we'll call it rapid recall. Some were rapidly recalling, much more rapidly than yeah. others were rapidly recalling. Yeah. So, yeah. Do, you, do you, what do you do about that? Do you keep observing, or as a teacher, do you? I, tr I try wherever I can, you know, to, to give children targets. So I, I look for that and say, you know, you struggled with that one here. You know, that's your target. I'll come back to you later on during the day and try to give them a strategy where we keep coming back to it. And um, one of the things I will say is that when when children see other children doing it, it helps them because it's giving them the answer straight away. So they might be a second or, or, or a few behind, yeah. but the information's still there. Well, that was a delight, wasn't it? The uh, enthusiasm for number was there in the uh, faces of the children. We could all see it. And of course, as you looked around the class, you saw children who could uh, easily manage those number bonds and children who were just being carried along by the rest. If we were chanting tables in Victorian times, it would be just the same. Some who got it and some who didn't. It's the endless challenge. How do we get children to be easy with number, happy with number, and just exploring number in all sorts of contexts? So where are we going now? Well, we're going to go down to the Key Stage 1, where we're going to see Mrs Webster's class, which is foundation. So it's just in here. Just in here. We've put them down in two. two. So we've got two. two. Everyone. Four. Four. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and Wilf is going to take away some of the bananas. No cheating, Beth. I can see some eyes looking. How many has Wilf taken away? Very good. People with their hands up and not calling out. Well done, everybody. OK, where do you think that one comes from? No. Have a look at the pattern. Good boy. Well done. And what about that one? Have a look at the pattern. Where does it go? Are you sure? <laughs> well, I thought that was great, Sally, really nice. Is that a daily thing? Or... It is a daily thing. It's a way of counting with our fruit. We get fruit delivered every day and we count it in, you know, see whether we've got enough people. We count it in twos, we count it in tens, we count it in fives. It's a really good way of uh, utilising that time. Yeah, I was interested in the little lad who... Um... Put the pears back in a different. Oh, put the pears. Um, put the. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but he put them in pears. <laughs> yeah. he, um, he, put, he put them in different places for everybody else. What was that about? He did. I don't know. He obviously knew how many had been taken away, but he hadn't quite seen the pattern. Yeah. So he knew that one had been taken away from each yeah. space, but yeah. he hadn't quite worked out the pattern. Whereas the child who did put the four back had worked out the pattern totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it was quite interesting. I'm Liz Lisburn. I'm the maths coordinator and head of Key Stage 1. Head of Key Stage 1? Yes. Oh, right. And maths. I... Maths. I've been looking at maths all morning. Really I've been good. looking at maths all morning too. We've been having maths in the hall. With, the, oh, maths with the puzzles. What do you mean, with the puzzles? Well, we've got this group called the Happy Puzzle Company who are playing puzzles with the children. Clue number one. The best shape to make your map is a rectangle. There are 20 tiles in the bag. You need to use all 20 tiles to complete the puzzle. Oh, 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 that should go in the middle. Yeah, that, yeah, so, yeah, that, 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 that. so, like, we can build more yeah, paths to go there. We need a bit. 
Well, for the first two minutes, we uh, saw five different individuals doing five different things, trying to solve the problem. In the last minute, they started to talk to each other. They started to listen rather than talk, and they started to try and solve the problem collectively. Look at the way they're working together now. Maybe if we did that, because then we could like, have a straight yeah, Jamie, this might go like that. Yeah, or maybe just that. Yeah, but we're not. Well, children at South Brent talk about having fun, and they seem to be having fun here with all these puzzles. They certainly are. Do you think they're using mathematical strategies or teamwork strategies or both? I think they're mainly using mathematical strategies, actually. And the teamwork is what they're trying to build. If they use the teamwork, then the mathematical strategies <laughs> are working <laughs> better. There's, that's for sure. If they did the puzzle again, they would get much more quickly to the solution? I think many of the teams would, the ones that are really talking to each other. And that's what I hope they're learning, that if you talk to each other and listen to each other and one person doesn't hog all the pieces, you're going to solve that problem a lot easier. I think there's no doubt they're talking to each other. Well, they, well, they <laughs> are. They're and, and, well. But they're all on task, they're talking about the puzzles, absolutely. they're not and talking about anything else. They're absolutely uh, yeah. you know, engaged with yes. the activities, aren't they? They are, they are. Puzzle day is something special for them, they're excited about it. The challenge for the school is to make that fit into the other learning that children do, so they apply things in different contexts, build their understanding of how to solve a puzzle into problems that they meet in the real learning that they engage with. Um, are you in the choir? Yeah, I'm in the choir. It's really fun. It's fun? You enjoy it? I Good. really enjoy it. You go places and perform? Yeah, we go to um, Exeter uh, basically Great. every year. And well, what are they singing now? School song. School song? Who wrote this? I don't know. Year sixes. Year sixes? All right. feel part of a big family? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's the best thing about South Brent School? The, the teachers are able to make everything seem fun, even like maths. Even like maths? Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Is that not supposed to be fun then? Well, it's, well, um, sometimes it doesn't seem fun, but I like the way that they, the way that the teachers teach yeah. the maths yeah. and that sort of thing. Is this really important, this having fun all the time? We've got to have fun all the time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. All the time? Yeah. What if you're good at fun? Do you get more fun? Um, yeah. right? If you're good at fun, you're not allowed to do any more fun until everybody's having the same amount of fun. Right? We're going to go to the woodland den. The woodland den? Yeah. And why do you think I should go and look at that? Well, I, I like it there because well, I go there every week and it's not that everybody gets to go there. What is, the, what is the woodland den? The woodland den is it helps children who have problems with, like learning, yeah. so they um, distract people in lessons, so they find they're making other people not being able to learn as well as they should be. And you go there, do you? Yeah, it helps because I find it hard to sit on the floor. You find it hard to sit on the floor? <laughs> yeah, I used to go up and walk around. Liam has brought me across with Olivia to see the woodland den. And I'm fascinated to know more about it. He's told me that it's a place where people who um, sometimes have trouble with themselves in the classroom, get distracted, are allowed to come and uh, spend a little bit of time. So I want to know more about it. What's so special about the Woodland Den? I'd say the Dreaming Den, because it's really cool in there, because like, whatever emotion you've got, you can just go in there. If you're angry, you can go in there and chill out. Sad, you can just stay in there by yourself and have a f or have a friend in. So it's a bit like a special family. Mm -hmm. When you come here, you know that people will listen and will care for you, even if they haven't got the same feelings as you. Yeah. Um, this is a dreaming den. If you're in any mood, you can like go in there and chill out. Um, happy, like sad, lonely or anything. And we've got special curtains to make it, just to decorate it and to make it more interesting. OK, let's go. Should we go on yeah. a walk? Yeah. Come on then, I can't wait. For us, what we found out is that all children have 
emotional needs which need attending to. So it doesn't actually matter if you're in an inner city area or in a rural environment, the stresses of life are very similar. I think how I got into here was because two years ago, different person totally. I was totally a different person. What sort and of person were you then two years ago? A naughty, irresponsible, stupid person. <laughs> and now? And now I think I'm quite mature for my age. So, Levi, how is it that you came to be in the woodland area? Well, I used to have loads of fallouts and things with all my friends, and me and my friends are getting less falling out, and we're like more older and more mature, and we just can't wait to share ideas with each other, and we can't wait until like the next day for school mm. to hang out. Yeah. Well, the Woodland Den was uh, fascinating. I chatted with some youngsters in there who show maturity, understanding, uh, an awareness of their own position, an awareness of their own behaviour, their own uh, development. And I'm sure much of that comes from the way in which the teacher, Mrs Bishop, has worked with those youngsters over time, trying to help them reflect on the way in which their behaviour affects others and affects themselves. The work is about the emotional well-being of all the children in the school. So we're looking to promote the well-being of the most emotionally literate children as well as the children who give us cause for concern. So for instance, with the emotionally literate ones, we will do things like training the year six to become peer mediators, to run playtime sessions outside at lunchtime. What I think would be a good solution is that Juliet, you stop bringing this one in because it's causing fights and you and you really don't want it to break up your friendship with these two, do you? Because I think you're really good friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You three were having a problem. Yeah, because we wanted this. We are all fighting over that, really, were you? Yeah, and we're and, the peer mediators. And you came to the peer mediators, or did they... How did you get involved in this conversation? Um, well, they come to us if they have any arguments. Yeah, and they saw us, actually. How do you know what to do? Well, when we apply to be a peer mediator, and then um, we get training to do it. What does peer mediation mean? Peer mediation is where you help the children. What's a peer? <laughs> what's a peer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a lovely day in the school and uh, children have told me a lot about it and uh, it's so positive. What, would you, uh, what words would you want to sum up your school? Three things I'm really trying to do. One is to fire their imagination completely and utterly, to sort of drown them really in creativity in terms of you know, how to do things, how to do it differently and how to be a doing kind of learner. But I guess most of all, I'm trying to develop a kind of culture and a curriculum that develops their curiosity. I want them to be curious learners. I want them to be, have a rage to come to school. I want them to race up the path, feel like there's a purpose to coming and not be restricted by what it is they could be curious about. At South Brent, we've seen some images of a day in the life of a school. It's a school where children work hard. They understand what giving an effort means. We've seen children who are cared for and understand how to care about themselves and to care about each other. It's been a delight to be here, a delight for me and I'm sure a delight for every child who spends a day in South Brent School.